Good evening and welcome. You're watching our major newscast here on CNC3. I'm Ria Rambley. I'm in Beichu. In the headlines, as THA officials meet, the chief secretary is being advised to refrain from removing his deputy. Why me afraid that I strong boy? I strong. I fight. Separia Regional Corporation workers square off with commuters impacted by their protests over potholes. Coming up in sport, TNT's Yannick Arria is the surprise inclusion in the West Indies World Cup T20 team. No room for Russell or Narain. From a newly formed tropical depression east of our area to a hazardous sea alert in effect for the country and sweltering temperatures continue lots to talk about in tonight's weather forecast. A former Chief Secretary is warning the Tobago House of Assembly about taking action against Watson Duke. Comes as officials of the Tobago House of Assembly met today for the first time since the public spat between the Chief Secretary and his deputy. Yesterday, Farley Augustin said the executive has discussed stripping Duke of his responsibilities after he posted videos on social media criticizing them. However, former Chief Secretary Ho Choi Charles says it is not the right time to act at least just yet. Chester Sambrano has the details. Any decision you make when you are ang you are emotionally under emotion stress is a decision that you are boom boom to regret. Words of warning and advice to the THA executive. Ho Choi Charles believes they should take their time before taking any action as he feels a resolution is not impossible. I am always prepared to have a conversation with them. Them being Chief Secretary Farley Augustin and his deputy Watson Duke. Both men have been at odds after Duke accused Augustin and his team of abandoning 27 Tobagonians who were stranded in New York last week. But having assessed the information available, Charles concludes that Duke's reasoning is not backed by evidence. But you make a video of that and send it out in the public? So that seemed not to have been the cause of this little problem that exists between them. I think Mr. Duke, being the leader of the party, wanted to get rid of the chief secretary. Charles also believes Duke's plan was to make Augustine's seat in the House vacant by removing him from the PDP, thus allowing him to control the THA for three months while waiting for a by-election. But he now recognize or now recognizing that that provision is only for the House of Representatives, not the TA. So he backfired on him. The former Chief Secretary explains that if motions of no confidence in either the Chief Secretary or Deputy Chief Secretary are successful, then a resignation has to take place within two days or the President will revoke their appointment. There has been no word from Augustine or Duke after the executive met on Wednesday. Chester Sambrano, CNC3 News. In other news, local government officials sat inside of a gaping pothole at Oropooch Junction today to complain about deplorable roads. But they were attacked verbally by motorists caught in traffic, as well as a passerby who said they should fix the pothole rather than cause traffic by sitting inside. Councillor for Avocat San Francisco Dudnat Meru says fixing potholes created by WASA is not their responsibility. This hole is almost two feet deep, and this almost occupies half of the roadway. Absolutely no respect. This is not the responsibility of the Sipaya Regional Corporation. And if we fix this one, we have 19 more things down the road to be fixed. So we can fix this one and leave the rest. And we just do not have the resources to entertain our 20 holes throughout the region. A chairman of the corporation, Dinesh Sankasingh, says the corporation is owing $4.6 million to 27 contractors and has not been able to access money from government for basic works. And look at this. When you are damaged your vehicle, where are you getting money to repair the vehicle? Where are you getting money to send your children to school? Immediately there's a high unemployment rate. Look at the state of this road. Totally unacceptable. It is suffering the people and the people need to get better representation at the level of the government to fix the roads, to ensure that they have a decent roadway to drive to work to go to work on. 
Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley recently announced the establishment of the Secondary Road and Rehabilitation Company, which will repair all secondary roads. It has been given a startup allocation of $100 million. Let's tell you what's still taking the news. More influenza cases, our reporters here will tell you what health officials are saying. And if you're cutting your pills into smaller pieces before taking them, then you could be reducing its effectiveness. We'll tell you more in tonight's Wellness Wednesday. Welcome back. There are more reported influenza cases for this period compared to last year. This according to Dr. Abe Hines, who says this could be as a result of this year's broader testing for respiratory illness. He says while it's outside of the typical influenza season, it is because patterns change with the pandemic. Because there was a reduction in mobility followed by a removal of those restrictions and spikes in travel at points in time that don't correspond to normal travel periods, anything can re-enter on the basis of movement of human beings. Meanwhile, Dr. Hines says there is a decline in new COVID-19 cases and hopes this is a sign that the Omicron lineage BA5 has run its course in Trinidad and Tobago. Well, some pills are quite literally hard to swallow, but trying to cut them into smaller pieces or even crushing them can be dangerous. In tonight's Malice Wednesday, Richard Khan and cameraman Neil Romain tell us why. Well, this Wednesday... Brought to you by Biostrat. Get what you need naturally. Some people, even adults, find it difficult to swallow pills. But how do you get around it? Do you reach for the knife or did you buy a dedicated pill cutter? Either way, you could be decreasing the pill's effectiveness. According to pharmacology lecturer at the University of the West Indies, Dr. Arlene williams Passad, cutting or crushing changes the way the medication works. Some tablets are prepared with a coating so that when you take it, it goes into the stomach and it, that's where it starts to have its activity. She warns that this could also lead to a phenomenon known as dose dumping. If you crush a tablet or a medication that is taken, supposed to be taken orally in a solid form, if you crush it under a powder and take it, you, you run the risk of suffering a high dose being delivered in a short period of time, and it can cause toxic effects. This, she says, can lead to organ and tissue damage. While some can be cut or crushed, she says there are some types of pills that should be taken whole. Disease-modifying drugs, um, immunosuppressor, anti-cancer agents that you might have to take, that they would recommend not to crush them and take them. Antibiotics are also not recommended to take half dose. Instead, she has one simple advice for those who have issues with ingesting pills. It's important to note that when you're prescribed a medication, you take it as prescribed. Even though it might be difficult to swallow some of these large tablets that are FDA approved, it is wise to speak to your doctor and find out how, how much risk is involved in if you alter the preparation of the drug before you take it in. She also says it's dangerous for people to share medication among themselves with first consulting a doctor. Rashad Hannessy, NC3 News. On this Wednesday, brought to you by Biostrat. Get what you need naturally. Barbados Prime Minister Mia Motley has made an appeal to the U.S. House Committee on Financial Services to de-risk Caribbean banks, as she argues... The current policy only serves as a restriction to economic activity as opposed to financial crime. Peter Christopher tells us more in tonight's Business Watch. Barbados Prime Minister Mia Motley gave testimony to the United States House Committee on Financial Services on Wednesday to urge for the de-risking of Caribbean banks. Motley argues that the rules of force are currently hindering the Caribbean's ability to trade with foreign investors. Our economies cannot function on their own. We do not make enough clothes, we do not produce our own food, we do not produce our own equipment, and therefore, unless we are able to trade the rest of the world, we are at risk of becoming financial pariahs. We, the majority of our countries, also depend on tourism. 
What happens when you tourists come? What happens when your investors want to build hotels? Well, he notes that while the rules were created to stop terrorist funding and money laundering, it has not been effective in that regard while proving restrictive for countries that traditionally have no connection with his activities. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Bradley was present at the hearing. P. Christopher, CNT3 Business Watch. All right, let's hand you over now to Jassy Marie. Thanks, Ria. Nicholas Paul and Jim Richards, they are among those handsomely rewarded by the TTOC for their Commonwealth Games exploits. We'll tell you how and why after this. Tonight's weather forecast is brought to you by Tato, where people are people. Welcome back. We are still tracking that hazardous seas alert that remains in effect for Trinidad and Tobago. So let's take a look at what the Met Office is continuing to call for as long period swells up to 14 seconds can continue to affect our northern coastlines and large battering waves and the high risk of rip currents continue to be likely. So continue exercising extreme caution for mariners and beachgoers and avoid entering the ocean if unnecessary. Now we're also tracking newly formed Tropical Depression 7 well east of the Lesser Antilles and it's forecast to become Tropical Storm Fiona over the next several days moving to towards the Leeward Islands. But how will it affect Trinidad and Tobago? Well, it will be causing some light winds to our area over the next several days. Not a lot of cloud activity to our east. And we will be seeing increased rainfall as we head into the weekend due to trailing bands of convergence. Looking at the forecast for us overnight tonight, generally settled conditions. Could see one or two isolated showers favoring eastern parts of Trinidad. Temperature-wise, relatively mild between 24 and 26 degrees. And for tomorrow, hot temperatures with sunny skies, maximum highs topping out at around 34 degrees Celsius, warmer across western parts of Trinidad. Now, we could still see isolated heavy showers or thunderstorms along western coastal Trinidad and hilly areas. Chances for that remain medium. And in those heavier showers, we could see some localized areas of straight or flash flooding, gusty winds, and lightning. So as you head out tomorrow, walk with the umbrellas in case it rains, as well as extra water and sunscreen. We now take a short break. Tonight's weather forecast was brought to you by Tato, where people are people. Welcome back. Parts of the capital were cordoned off this morning as officials chased a capybara through the city. Oh, what an adventure, right? Well, CNC3 News can confirm now that the animal was captured and is now back in its natural habitat. The large rodent was rescued by the founder of the El Socorro Center for Wildlife Conservation earlier today after it roamed Port of Spain all night. And according to Ricardo Mead, there are a few places the animal could have come from. Take Carissa Lee. And just like that, she's back to where she belongs. But this happy bar's morning did not start this way. She had to be rescued by founder of the El Socorro Center for Wildlife Conservation, Ricardo Mee, after she was spotted roaming the capital city this morning. With the help of police officers and some citizens around, we were able to, um, after a short chase, corner the animal in front of Royal Bank, RBC. Mead and the others were able to restrain the large rodent and place her in the truck of his vehicle. He then carried the capybara to the Karani swamp and released it. But how did it end up in Port of Spain? It could have come along the Beetham area because of the swampy area there. Capybaras have been sighted near the Beetham dump, landfill and such area there. And, um, you know, something could have just literally just jumped out of somebody's vehicle who might have had it in the back of a pickup truck. Mead said, apart from some scratches, the rodent, native to South America, was okay and should be able to find its way back to others like her. In 2019, the Ministry of Agriculture listed the animal as vermin, harmful to crops and farm animals. Mead said that is why he was happy to capture the capybara when he did. But it was still an unusual sight for those passing through Port of Spain on Wednesday morning. They are right here in Trinidad in the swampy areas. You wouldn't see it normally. Um, now there's been a bit of population pressure development, and now you're seeing them moving around a whole lot more. Carissa Lee, CNC3 News. A roaming rodent in the city. Right. I'm just glad it kept barrier. Okay. That's, yeah, and, and a really nice happy end to what was a pretty, pretty story. Well, that brings us to the end of our news here on CNC3. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Ryan Bailey. I'm Ryan Bechu. But don't go anywhere. The pitch with Jassy Marie is up next.
pitch with Jassy Marie is up next.